Hey folks, how are y'all doing today? I'm doing well. This is not one of my normal videos. This is not one of my jokes. So first off, this is not a long preamble to a punchline. There are some funny moments to the story, but this is not a joke. This is a story. It has some funny elements to it, but it has some very serious elements to it. So yeah, I uh, want to tell you a story about what happened to me four years ago on this very day. Um, there's a little bit of a setup for that. So like I said, this is still, this is still not a joke, but there is a little a bit of background to the story, to what happens on the events of this day on, you know, February 18th, 2020. So sit back and I've got a heck of a story to tell you. When my wife and I moved down to uh, Central Texas, we moved from Fort Worth to from the Fort Worth area to the Austin area uh, in uh, the summer of 2019. And, uh, you know, we enjoyed it. I, I liked it a little bit. I mean, I wasn't thrilled about coming down here. My wife's job brought us down here and um, I had a transfer. So we left, left all my friends and family that I had up there. I have some family in the Austin area, but left all my you know close friends that were in the Fort Worth and Dallas area to come down here. and. Um, you know, started working at my, at, I was able to transfer and, uh, I did that. It was kind of nice. Um, about in the fall of 2019, I would say probably about mid November, I had this, uh, I guess you could say it was, looked like a sore. It was like kind of a, like a, I thought it was initially, I thought it was a cut because I, uh, you know, I'm clumsy. I run into things all the time. And um, so I kind of was treating it, you know, putting a Band-Aid on it. Then I would put um, a little Neosporin on it, you know, and it just wasn't quite healing right. So I started, you know, it's like, well, I'll make sure that it's not gonna get infected. So I started washing it every day with hydrogen peroxide because that's going to clean it. And, um, you know, so I kept going along, kept going along. And about the second week of, of sec second week of December, my wife said, you know, you might want to see a doctor about that. It's like, you know what? I think I will. I'll go see a doctor. So I started seeing a doctor about it. And their initial uh, question was, Are, was I diabetic? And no, I am not diabetic. I've, I've had blood tests. And since even since this issue, I'm not diabetic. I'm a big guy. I'm six foot four, six foot five, you know, closer to six foot, six foot five. And I'm, I'm over three bills, as they say. But, um, you know, I'm, a built, I'm built like an offensive tackle, but I'm not as athletic as one. Um, but I'm not, I'm not diabetic. Um, so when I was going through, he, the doctor put me on antibiotics, gave me some medications. And this spot hurt because it was, it had gone from being like, you know, that, you know, about, okay, you're not seeing it, about that big to being almost the size of my, uh, my pinky nail. So just under the size of a dime. Uh, it was like a kind of a patch and it hurt. And then I would clean it and, and then I just started noticing, it started getting a little bit kind of deeper. It wasn't, it looked, at first it looked like a, uh, like a raspberry or, you know, as, you know, as I say, when you like, you fall, skin your knee, and you're like, ow, that hurts, you know, and you get a little, what they call a raspberry. And, um, and that's what I basically thought it was. It's like, I must have skinned my shin on something. And so, um, like I said, kept cleaning it with, uh, uh, with a, a hydrogen peroxide. And then the doctor said, well, maybe you might want to switch from that. that. That might be a little rough. It's like, oh, okay, well, I'll switch over to, uh, how about uh, this medicated soap? It's like, oh yeah, that's good. Medicated soap was betadine, which is, uh, uh, an iodine soap. So in January I was doing that, you know, and that was like, I'd gone, you know, he'd, I'd gone one, you know, December and into January, he goes, okay, I'm going to turn you over to uh, a wound care in, you know, in this next month. So you need to get that taken care of. It's like, okay. And so, but I wasn't able to get an appointment until like first week of uh, February. And I have insurance through my health, you know, through my job. I have health insurance. And so 
you know, I go in and they said, well, okay, this is what you've got going on. It looks like you got like a wound. And I was like, wound? And um, so we're going to have you come in on the 18th of February. And this was the 13th of February. And I needed to get like an ultrasound done on my leg to, to, because they want to elim uh, eliminate any possibility of uh, blood clots in my leg. And I was like, oh, okay. And so cut to February 18th, 2020. I'm in the shower getting ready for work. Actually, no, I was supposed to, take, I was supposed to go, the, the appointment was supposed to be on the 19th. Anyways, I'm in the shower getting ready for work. And I'm, you know, showering up, showering up, showering up. And I get to where, you know, wash my hair. And I'm, you know, getting the soap out of my eyes. And I've got my back, you know, the shower's to my back. And I look down in the shower. And we have, I had, I've got a big, at that apartment, you know, at the time, we had a large walk-in shower. I mean, you could put five people in there. It was huge. It was like a big walk-in closet. And I look down and I see this splash on the wall of the shower. You know, because normally it's a white wall, but this was like a kind of a dark purpley uh, splash, you know, and I, as normally I wear glasses, but I decided, you know, I didn't want to have glare on in this camera. And I look and I was like, what is that? And I look down, there is a stream. Actually, stream is putting it lightly. There's this spray of blood coming out of my leg. And, uh, and I was like, what the heck? And what had happened is because, like I said, this, this sore uh, or wound had been, it was right next to one of the main uh, veins on the front of your shin. And I guess that, that vein had decided to give out. And it ruptured. And, it, and, that was, and like I said, it wasn't a trickle. You know, like you said, oh, I'm bleeding. No, it was like, oh my God, I'm bleeding. And so I turn off the shower, I step out, and I grabbed, uh, and like, and for, like, for, like I said, well, for the first couple seconds, I was like, I was aghast, like going, what is this? Why am I bleeding out of my leg? Because I can look at it now, and like, well, it happens. But no, it was, you know, blood coming out of my leg. Um, so I stood there and then, and at that time, my wife, uh, with her job, she was able to office out of the apartment. And like I said, this is 2020, this is February, 2020. And, at the, and like I said, my wife was working out of, uh, she officed out of our home at that time. And before anybody officed out of their home <laughs> in 2020. And, um, and usually when I'm in the shower, a little, behind the scenes thing. When I'm, at, when I'm in the shower, I have, my, I have my iPhone on the bathroom counter and I'm playing music. Because one, I like to listen to music in the shower. Also, if I know the length of the song, it helps me keep tabs on how long I'm in the shower. Usually it's two songs, which is about six minutes, six to eight minutes that I like to be in the shower and make sure I get completely clean. And that way I'm also not racking up a big water bill. Anyways, um, so I'm step out and I'm like, bleeding and I let my wife know you know I get the phone I called my wife I said I need you to come back here right now and um, she comes in and she sees me and she's like oh my gosh what do you want me to do I said call 911 I'm gonna call work and I at that by that time I grabbed a towel, the towel I was going to dry off with, which was a dark colored towel, thank God, and slapped it onto my knee, on my shin, to use it as some sort of pressure. And then she, you know, my wife went and called 911. I called my work and said, hey, I think I'm not going to be able to make it in. I've, my leg is bleeding right now. I don't know. I might be, I might try to come in. <laughs> I might try to come in. I've got this gout of blood coming out of me, but I'm going to try to come in. That's, that's how, that's how dedicated of an employee I am. And, uh, they're like, okay, give us a call when you're, uh, when you let us know what's going on. It's like, okay. And I hang up. And like I said, for, and for a couple seconds there, I thought, well, maybe this will stop. Maybe the blood will stop eventually. It'll just stop bleeding. 
And in the back of my mind, it's like, no, it's only going to stop when you run out of blood. When you get empty, that's when it stops. So, uh, and then for what seemed like, you know, 30 minutes, but it wasn't even 30 minutes, wasn't even five seconds. I was like, am I going to die? Am, am I really going to die in the shower bleeding in my bathroom? And for, like I said, for, you know, what seemed like 30 minutes, but for five, you know, but it was probably five seconds. I sat there and said, I'm not going to die. I made a decision I was going to not going to die there. And I had, I had been, you know, I had been dressing, you know, the spot with like these bandages, like the little compressed bandages. I grab one out of the package and then there's blood kind of squirting out. I get one. I just I hold it up like it's flex tape. That's going to stop the blood. And it just completed, it just continued to, and it wasn't, but it wasn't pulsing. It was just, it was a steady stream. That's, that's the thing to remember. It was a steady stream because if it's pulsing, that's an artery. And the difference between a, a arterial bleed and a, what they call a venous bleed or a vein bleed. A vein bleed, you've got time. Arterial bleed, you have seconds. So, something to consider. So, my wife called. You know, she's talking to, uh, to 911. And she is incredibly calm. You know, she was a little panicked, but, I mean, but for the most part, she wasn't losing her head. And they, you know, and they said, well, you need to do this. You know, make sure, he, make sure he's keeping pressure. And when she went to come in and uh, see if I was keeping pressure, I'd lifted the bandage, or I'd lifted the towel off my leg, and blood goes, whoop, up onto the mirror of the bathtub of the of the bathroom and she goes make sure you, and then she she goes don't do that and i was like oh yeah i'm not and i'm putting it back on and then she also uh they also make make sure he's keeping his leg elevated and i and by that time i kind of lifted my leg up and put it up on the bathroom counter that's a three foot almost four foot counter that we had in our bathroom and uh and you know she said you know uh ambulance and fire is on the way I was like super. While I was waiting on the EMTs to show up, and my wife had, was checking on me, and she went to go secure Finn. You know, they told her to go secure Finn. Um, I was like just thinking of stuff that else that I could do while I had my leg propped up on the on the bathroom counter. And one of the things was is that I should, uh, you know, like a tourniquet. It's like I need a tourniquet, and uh, hey. Get me my belt. Get me, and I had a. Uh, I, give me that that belt uh, that I have on on the counter on the on my dresser, and give that to me. And she gave me this belt, and it was one of those kind of braided belts. And I wrapped it around my leg as tight as I could get it, you know, above you know above the spot, and you know, right. I might have been like just below the knee, and um, I cinched it. And I mean, like I said, I had it as hard as I could just to kind of slow everything down. And like I said, during this whole time, I could hear the the blood just kind of drip, 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 just kind of landing on the concrete, landing on the tiled floor. You know, we had a tile floor bathroom. And um, yeah, it was, it was, that was getting uh, kind of, and by that time the bathroom was getting pretty, pretty messy. And then by that time, ambulance had arrived. The, the or actually not the ambulance, the firemen arrived. They come in and and they're like, "Okay, sir, what do you? What seems to be problem?" And I'm giving them a quick history. I'm like, and I'm standing there. He's like, "What seems to be the problem?" And here is a six foot four, you know, dude with his leg on the counter with a big old bath towel on his leg that's dripping blood. And he's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like. And I want to say, like, what do you think? What's it look like? Like, what symptoms would be a problem? I am bleeding out of my leg. And I told him. I, I, I shut down all sarcasm. I didn't let any intrusive sarcasm uh, thoughts happen you know, through. And I said, yeah. I'm, and I told him a quick uh, thing. And they're like, all right, well, let's see what we can do for you. And then, because the whole thing was the firemen had gotten there first. The EMTs hadn't arrived yet. The EMTs were about five minutes behind. I guess, I guess they were in a... 
another part of the county because these were county uh, firefighters, and they were you know, so there's a little bit little bit of distance of uh, where the uh, EMTs were. So you know, back to this, we're we're I'm 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 working you know you know the uh, firemen are sitting there going like, well let's put a bandage on it, let's put a and they moved the towel and they, they saw how much blood was coming. I was like, okay, let's get a pressure bandage on it. And, uh, and during this whole time, I'm looking up, um, and I'm looking, I'm looking at my, my reflection in the mirror and I'm looking at my face and I'm making sure that, you know, I was, I had, had about this much color I, that, I, that I wasn't losing any, that I wasn't getting ashy or gray or white, that I wasn't getting paler than I already am. That, you know, that I was still getting, okay. And I, and, and I was still, I was feeling good. I wasn't panicked. And what the weird thing is that whole time, that whole time when my leg was bleeding and all that, I didn't hurt. The leg didn't hurt me. Because previously, you know, usually at building up to this, I would sit there and cry for five minutes. Because the pain was so bad on that spot. Because the, you know, because it was, it was, it was an open wound. For better, you know, lack of a better term, it was, and that's what it was, and it hurt so much. I would cry, tears, tears. I would cry for five minutes, and I would sit there and I would take, you know, I would, you know, I was taking a leave and Tylenol, and you know, and they gave me one thing, and it just didn't do the trick. You know, well, they gave me one pain medication, and it did nothing. It hurt. And I understand, and the whole thing is, I understand when people talk about chronic pain. I understand chronic pain, and you know, and and you know, and it would hurt so bad. And I would just, you know, and a lot of times I'd be in so much pain, I would just kind of, I would just, it was taking everything for me to go through the day, get through the day, without at work, without crying, or, or you know, tears welling because the pain hurt. Or lashing out at someone because I was in so much pain and then so I kept you know and that was you know and and that's what that was what what it was like and then um, so like I said I was you know I hadn't during that time I hadn't felt any pain and then and and that was weird that was that, that was one of the weird things about it is like I wasn't hurting but I was you know maybe it's because of all the adrenaline that I had going in my body from that because I was definitely in fight response. I wasn't fighting, I was fighting, you know, because I guess I, when I decided that I wasn't going to to bleed out, I I was gonna do this. And, and then um, I think by that time I heard, I think the EMTs, the ambulance had arrived because I could hear it outside. And, um, but one of the firemen, one of the firefighters was like, sir, would you like to, would you like to sit down out here on the bed? You know, because we, because we had, we had a master suite with the, um, with the bathroom, you know, with the, with the master suite bathroom, joining it, you know, and, um, you know, and the fireman's like, would you like to sit down and maybe you'll be a little bit more comfortable? And I was like, dude, if I sit out there on the bed and get blood on the ca a carpet of my bedroom, my wife is gonna kill me. <laughs> so. I keep standing there, and then by this time, uh, the other uh, the other firemen, because yeah, there was it was I thought it was initially two, but there was three firemen, and the other two had come back in with uh, with the uh, with their gearbox, and that's when they wrapped up. They started wrapping up my leg with a big old like a big like pressure bandage, kind of like you see like in you know the war movies like in Mash or. Or any one of those war movies where they, where they're putting a big pressure bandage on it. I mean, it was huge. It was like the size of a football. And uh, and then by this time, the two, you know the the two EMTs walk in, and they're female. So there it is. There's myself, my wife, three male firefighters, and then two female EMTs in my house in my bedroom. I'm the only one that's naked. It was not as sexy as I thought it would ever play out in my head. So, yeah, that's how that was. But, and like I said, I'm still standing there naked this whole time. And like, they're sitting there like, okay, you know, the, uh, the 
the the the two the two EMTs like, well, okay, we got this, got this. All right, looks okay. All right, let's let's get him out of here. And then one of the firefighters goes, let's put some clothes on him before we take him out of here. <laughs> so yeah, so they put some clothes on me. I get a I put on a t-shirt and a pair of my workout shorts, and uh, and then they. I can't remember if they tried to put me in the gurney that they brought the gurney into the apartment and they're like, well, let's not do this. And so it's like, let's get the gurney. Let's, you know, they put the gurney back outside. Cause it was a bit of a, cause it, it was a weird walk in at our apartment. Cause like you walk in and there's a closet and you turn to the left and then you're in the apartment. And so, um, I think, I, I guess they left it out there. So they got, they put me in an office chair and they kind of rolled me up to the door and then kind of like, kind of half lifted and half like let me step out of the chair and I got in the, uh, in the gurney and they put me in the gurney, strapped me in, rolled me up to the, uh, to the ambulance, got me in there, locked me in there and they, they took off. And the hospital they were taking me to was 15, 20 minute drive. Cause where we were, I mean, it was Hutto at the time we, well, we were living in Hutto. And at the time they had like a, like a small medical center, like a, uh, you know, like a 24 hour dock in a box type things, but not an actual hospital, but there was a county hospital, um, part of the county network hospital, like I said, 20 minutes away. And so, you know, they put it into gear and got it going and got it driving. I think then I knew I was going to be okay because they didn't have the siren on. She, the driver was driving. She was driving really fast. I could I could tell that, you know. And they and she had um, and they hooked me up to like the the blood pressure monitor and pul pulse monitor and all that. And my pulse rate was my pulse rate was kind of high. I think it might have been like at one ten, and my blood pressure was probably like a little elevated, like like one forty over ninety. And I usually I usually keep about a one one twenty over seventy five eighty on my blood pressure, um, but you know my you know, my my pulse rate might have been like about a about a one ten one one hundred one ten you know, which is a little elevated you know, and uh, but they didn't have the ambulance uh, they didn't have the the siren going, and then we get to the hospital and they get me in there and. And all that, and I was like, okay, I think I'm okay. And by this time, my wife has got the phone. She's got um, her phone, and she's basically letting people know what's going on. Heck, before I even, um, it was, it's weird because I thought this like before I did any of this. I was like, I got on Facebook. So weird. I got on Facebook and I said, I need prayers. I need prayers now. And you know. And it's weird that you would sit there and think that you would do that at that time. It was like, cause in revert in removed from it, you know, you, you would sit there and say, why would somebody do that? But yeah, I, I felt, I felt the need. I felt the power. I'm not the power. I felt that, that it was needed at that time. So when I want to see that now, I, I, you know what? I don't, I totally understand. And so, um, so what I did was I, um, when we got to the hospital, I, you know, my, the only other fear that I, cause like I said, I was pretty sure that I was going to be okay. The only fear I had was, you know, how were they going to get stop bleeding? I mean, they had it bandaged, but it was still, it was still bleeding, but it wasn't as bad. Um, it wasn't uncontrolled. Uh, and then when the doctor came in and she looked and then she goes, well, and she kind of got to a certain point and then she kind of opened up the bandage and it still kind of spurted out. And she's like, okay, let's close this back up. And then she realized what she, cause she needed to see what she was needing to do. So they were, they were able to kind of like stop the blood flow and you know, I guess they got a tighter, by this time it's kind of a fog, um, of what because it was happening so fast and I think by that time I was starting to come down from my adrenaline rush and so they um um she was able to go in and she put in like six to eight stitches and closed up the vein and got it you know repaired 
and then they bandaged me up and then I told them what was going on and they ended up giving me my, um, my ultrasound there. You know, they brought in a guy who did the ultrasound. He's like, oh, your leg's clear for, uh, for the most part, you know, all the other stuff, you know, what we were looking for. And they ended up having me go from, which was kind of nice. They ended up having me not go, uh, cause I was supposed to go to a, uh, uh, the, the wound care specialist was like on the other side of Austin. He was like practically 30 miles from where I was. And then I ended up getting to go closer. So like it would, it would have been like an hour drive. It cut it down to 20 minute drive. So it was kind of nice. And, you know, like I said, my biggest fear was that the, the doctor wasn't going to be able to get it closed up. And so she was able to get closed up, which hurt, which helped. And I ended up getting, um, going through wound care and then basically learning what was going on is that I have been doing standing jobs my entire life, uh, my entire life, uh, adult life, uh, for, you know, 30 years, 30 plus years, I have been doing, um, you know, some sort of standing job, you know, retail, I worked at DFW airport for a while. And I've always been on my feet. And the biggest thing was, it's like, you know, you do that, you get varicose veins, you know, those puffy veins. And so, and what the problem was is that blood wasn't completely, um, you know, getting completely circulated. It would sit there, kind of cool a little bit and all that, but it kind of puffs out and it, and it kind of collect there. And so you eventually get to a point where you have a hard time if you get a cut there because the pressure from you standing, it won't allow the, the wound to, to heal properly. It won't close because it's just the skin's always being kind of stretched out because from the from the varicose veins, and then um, so I was able to get that corrected, um, and I wear my compression socks all the time. Uh, well, not all the time, but I mean when I'm awake and working and all that. Uh, and then I had uh, then I learned in le uh, wound, wound care to never clean a, hydro, uh, a cut with hydrogen peroxide after the initial cut and he goes you could use it once and then you use soap and water for the rest of the time if you have to wash it i was like okay i learned my lesson on that one um and so you know after i got discharged they put me in a walking cast and i followed up a couple of days later and i was ended up being off work for about a month but when I, my wife and I got home, um, we prayed in the car in the uh, parking lot of, the, uh, of our apartment. And um, I was thankful. I thank God for me not dying. I thank God for the, the timeliness of the, of the uh, firefighters and the EMTs. And the skill of the, of the doctor in the in the emergency room, I was it was scary because um, I ended up bleeding out at least a pint and a half, possibly two pints. I didn't lose a lot. Of, I lost a lot of blood, but I didn't lose enough where they would have to keep me overnight. That was that was also the other thing I was kind of concerned about. It's like I, I would have to stay the night in the hospital, but I didn't have to. Felt like I stayed the whole night. Because this happened at like 12.30 in the afternoon. And I ended up having to be in the ER. I didn't get out of there until 8 o'clock, 8.30. So that was that was a little scary. Um, I thank God for the, for the EMTs, for the doctor, um, and for my wife being there. Because if she had been at work, I don't know what would have happened. Um, I mean, everything would have happened. I mean, they, but I, you know, you know, if, uh, if I called 911 and then like, I don't know what would have, you know, my wife calmed me down or I was actually able to keep me calm. But if, if that had happened, I don't know. Like, if I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd be afraid to think that it happened while, while, if she was at work and, um, and I was by myself and, you know, that's, that's the ultimate worst, worst case scenarios, you know, but 
and my like like I said, my wife and I prayed that night, and we've prayed uh, every night together since then. So I'm not saying that you know it's the thing, it's the answer for you, but it helps. It helps in times of stress, um, and I'm happy that I did. So I mean, I'm, I'm trying to beat you over the head with it, but. Yeah, give it a try. So, to wrap it up, um, there's a few things to, you know, a few takeaways from this. There's always, you know, take care of yourself, for one. If your spouse, significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, whomever, says, hey, you might want to go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Um... Make sure you have some, you know, some sort of plan. I mean, you may never know, you know, but have some sort of plan about whatever, you know, if something emergency comes up in your house, have an idea what, you, what you're going to do, what you need to do. Um, you know, like I said, one, take care of yourself. Always take care of yourself. That's why I always sign off. Y'all take care. And then, uh, you know, like I said, you know, if you're, uh, if you're the praying sort, Please continue to pray. If you're not, you know, um, I'm not saying you should, but you can do what you need to do for yourself, okay? But as always, I hope I didn't bore you with this. Uh, this is a peek in what happened to me four years ago, and I went. I this is something I experienced, and it was, it was scary, but I made it through. I'm here talking to you. This is one of the reasons why I'm actually doing this now. I, when I first moved down here, I had talked about, oh, you know, in 2019, I said, yeah, I want to do a, I might want to do a, a food blog. And, um, you know, but it took a little bit longer to get settled. And then 2019 happened, happened. And so I went through what I went through in February. And then the next month in March of 2020, we experienced, everybody experienced that. And so when 2021 came around, I decided definitely by, by golly, I was going to do the Texas food dude. And now I sit there and, you know, when I sit back and think about th what happened three years ago here in this area, we were in the midst of what we called snowmageddon or snowvid and everything was frozen we had no power for 24 hours, or actually, we had no power for 28 hours, and we were without water for 36, and we were lucky in my, where we were. And uh, I made it through that. So, we'll just keep on going. All right. Well, like I said, hopefully I didn't bore you too much. Y'all take care. Be safe. 